For those of you who are taking thesis seminar, I wanted to provide a recap, kind of a summary of what we've been working on during weeks one and two. Try to get through this. My voice is a little raspy, uh, but we'll try to get through it. So during weeks one and two, we mainly focused on reading as many articles that we feel are necessary to support our literature review. We completed a problem statement, a thesis statement, and a section outline. At this point, all of you should have completed these uh, during week one. Many of you are still reading, finding articles. But at this point, we should have most, if not all, of the articles that we need now for supporting our literature review. I did mention last week, during week two, I mentioned that the section outlines typically are going to be from two to four. And if you have only two main sections, then you probably will need to have subsections within at least two subsections within each of those two main sections. If you have three main sections or four main sections, I don't think it's necessary to have a subsection. As a general rule, remember that you need to have at least two paragraphs in any one section in your literature review. So this week we're going to focus on expanding our outline. And what I mean by expanding our outline, what I would recommend that you do is once you have your sections, begin writing out, completing a topic sentence that will begin each of your body paragraphs within each of those respective sections or subsections. This is kind of a working outline, although I call it an outline, but I, I would recommend that you don't use bullet points. I would just format the text, format the topic sentences and the sections uh, as you plan to do according to APA, according to the formatting for a level one, a level two, and a level three heading. The main sections of your headings are considered level two headings. And so you're going to have anywhere from two to four level two headings. And again, if you have two main sections at a level two, you'll have some subsections considered level three. So if you're looking online or you're not sure exactly how to format that heading or those headings, uh, look for a level two, level three headings according to APA 7th edition. Make sure when you're doing a search that you also include 7th edition because there was a change in the way that we format uh, a level 3 heading uh, between the 6th edition and the 7th edition. So begin expanding your outline. Try to complete as best as you can the topic sentences. Now the topic sentences should be your own original ideas, so try to avoid any citations. So citations are going to be functioning as evidence sentences that will support your topic sentence. So depending on your reading, depending on the articles that you've found, or perhaps even articles that you have not found yet, your topic sentence are either going to be based on the literature, or maybe it's just a brainstorming ex exercise where you still need to go in and find more articles that support that particular topic sentence. Either way, I think it's a good idea to build out or expand your outline as best you can to plan for those more or less 10 to 12 topic sentences or subsequently those 10 to 12 paragraphs, more or less, that are going to be included in your literature review. So once you have completed your topic sentences in the form of like in the order in which you feel you're going to present your outline, then I would, I would complete one body paragraph to be uploaded as an assignment in Microsoft Teams. So I can provide some feedback, give you some ideas and some suggestions, things to think about when you're developing your paragraph. Now I've included some links that I think are relevant for this week, week three, and I've included them here. Uh, just below tips and links. The first being the thesis statement. Again, primarily this is more relevant to last week and week one, but I did include it here again if you are making any changes still at this point to your thesis statement. It is 
common once you start building out and you're writing your literature review and you're getting into your sections and your paragraphs, uh, it's a good idea to keep coming back to your thesis statement because quite often as we're writing, we need to be either reminded of what the thesis statement is or perhaps even in the process of writing and rethinking again our topic, it might be necessary to tweak or change or modify slightly your thesis statement as you're completing the rest of your literature review. So just expect that. Make sure you're going back to that thesis statement, making any slight changes at this point as necessary. Now, if you ever get to a point where you feel that a more drastic change is required to your thesis statement, then I feel like we need to have a conversation so that we can discuss it. Maybe I can provide uh, some alternative tips or maybe some suggestions about how you can modify it. Uh, and um, perhaps it would be best to make that decision together if, if you feel that you need a more drastic change to your thesis statement at this point. The next link I have here, the meal plan, relates to building a body paragraph, making sure that each body paragraph is between five to eight sentences, that you have a main idea or topic sentence, as we've been talking about, to begin each body paragraph. The second sentence of each body paragraph should be an evidence sentence. That's going to be in the form of a detail, an example, a fact, a statistic, and you'll need to have a parenthetical citation. Uh, we'll need to have at least one analysis sentence and at the end of each body paragraph, either a linking sentence or a summarizing sentence. Typically, a linking sentence will link the current main idea of the current um, paragraph to uh, the main idea of the subsequent paragraph or paragraph that's coming later. It is also possible that you could link to uh, link that paragraph back to the thesis statement. That's also a possibility. Or you can even link it back to something you've already developed in prior paragraphs. There are a lot of ways to go about thinking uh, about linking and where you're pointing your information. Uh, but there is some flexibility in how you construct that last sentence. But again, in general terms, think of that last sentence of each body paragraph as either being a linking sentence or a summarizing sentence. Now, talking about citations, I've included a page here that uh, I'm sharing with everybody that relates to recent articles. And my computer's a little bit slow right now. It's not opening up the page. But um, once I finish this video, I'll make sure that it's still available. It was there a minute ago. But it basically summarizes different types of citations and ways to think about citations. So we want to try to include as many recent citations as possible when we say recent within the last five years or so. But you could also include older works that are considered seminal. Seminal works are going to be those that are uh, maybe that are well cited, that have been cited by many other authors, many other researchers, and other papers. So you could also include some seminal work. You also, uh, I'm suggesting to everyone to use parenthetical citations over narrative citations. So parenthetical citations are going to occur at the end of the sentence, and the entire citation is going to be within, par within uh, parentheses. And just be careful with the punctuation that you include the period after the citation, not before the citation, making sure that the citation is within the sentence that it refers to. There should be no confusion as to what sentence is a main idea, what sentence is not a main idea requiring a citation. So try to also avoid mixing within the same sentence an original idea and an idea that comes from an outside source. Each sentence should be a complete original idea or completely an idea from another article, another author. So do take a look at this page here uh, regarding the types of citations. I also mentioned in this page the importance of trying to stick to mainly primary sources, primary research articles, trying to avoid secondary sources as, as best as possible. 
Uh, we talked about in class some different tips if you are uh, looking at an article and they cite someone else and you really want to use that idea. Uh, there's some different strategies to go about trying to find the original source. So again, if the author is famous, perhaps the same author or researcher said the same thing in another article or somewhere else that you can access as a primary source. You could also, you could also try to find someone else that says basically the same thing, again, coming from a primary source. So these are a couple of ways that you can go about trying to narrow down and find those, those primary uh, sources. Of course, the, the first would be, and I forgot to mention this, if you are looking at a citation within a citation, try your best to find that citation that's listed in the article that you already have. So I think that would probably be my first step. And just try to exhaust any possible way you can try to find uh, that information. Do your due diligence to try to find the information from a primary source. If you've exhausted those options and you still feel it's absolutely necessary to include this, perhaps you can use a secondary source, but do use them sparingly. I have a link here for Clarity and Style, so take a look at this page. This is something we're going to be talking more about as we get closer to completing our first draft and later our final draft. There's a lot of information here, and I'm not going to go over it now, but there is a lot of information here about word choice, word clarity, style, tone, what kind of ways that we can try to avoid the uh, passive voice, the active voice being pr the preferred way of writing. I have some examples of emphatic versus uh, unemphatic writing or phrasing. I'm going to be specific in certain topic sentences or certain words or phrases to avoid when writing a topic sentence. So I would bookmark this page and have it available to you. And as I'm providing feedback, this might help offer some clarity whenever uh, we're talking about different aspects of uh, tone or style. Finally, I have a link here, actually two more links. One link called Writing Errors Code. So as I begin looking at your documents and, and leaving comments in your shared Word Online document in Teams, which I would recommend that you frequent uh, and to make changes uh, throughout each week, I will leave a lot of times an error code list. And here's the list. I'm already familiar with it. These are the codes that I use with the name and oftentimes a link for further information that helps maybe clarify to either identify what the error is and also giving you some ways to try to avoid those particular errors. So take a look at this page here that relates to the error code list. And finally, types of transitions. I'm going to share this link now as we're just getting started. Some of you are writing out your paragraphs and some of the things we'll be talking about is how to try to connect ideas from one sentence to the next. So as it relates to transitions, I'm offering four different ways to think about how you can connect an idea, how you can begin a sentence that connects with a prior sentence. So for our purposes, when I talk about transitions, I'm primarily referring only to sentences that are supporting sentences, that is, uh, sentences within a body paragraph that occurs after the topic sentence. I think for your topic sentence, the main idea of your, your paragraph, your body paragraph, I would recommend, for the most part, to begin with a main clause. I don't feel that it's necessary to have a transition to begin a paragraph because usually we'll either be linking uh, we'll have a linking sentence from the prior paragraph that segues into the, the present paragraph. And a lot of times, really, it's not even that necessary if everything else falls into place. So if you still have, you can still write a complex sentence, have a 
a subordinating clause in your topic sentence if it comes after the main clause. I would suggest having the main clause come first <clears throat> with no type of transition whatsoever. And, uh, and then think of these different types of transitions as it relates to linking the sentences within each body paragraph. Infinitive phrases, participial phrases, prepositional phrases, and of course, sentence categories. And I have a link here by category that you might find useful. So I think I'll stop there. Make sure that you are reaching out to me at this point if you are still struggling to narrow down your researchable topic, if you're still having problems finding articles. We need to schedule time right away before our next tutoring session. So please reach out to me. We can meet online. We can meet in my office. You can either uh, send me a, or mention me as a comment in your shared Word Online document in Teams if you want me to look at something and I provide some feedback within your document. I can certainly do that. Okay, so we'll stop there for today. I look forward to getting into uh, week three. And uh, again, make sure that you're trying to make progress little by little um, each day. So not to put off too many days, not uh, making any kind of a, an advancement on your work. Okay, so we'll see everybody next week.